Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of Thirsty Thursday. Today, bargain beer um, testing. Um, as you know, we were trying to explain life's mysteries to you. Um, are werewolves really real? And how come, once you dump your baggages, you walk through the security bit at the airport, the first shop you come to always seems to sell Samsonite suitcases. So if you bought one, how the hell would you get it on the plane? Anyway, is there such thing as a decent priced bargain beer? Today we test this Young's London Gold. Now sort of two years ago and a bit in the UK, um, everyone was sort of flying the flags and getting the bunting out for, um, it was Jubilee and also it was the Olympics or Jubilympics as some people call it. Um, we're not necessarily great at organising things in the UK anymore but the Olympics seem to go down alright. This, I think, was maybe an originally a Young's Q beer, but then it got rebadged, rebranded for the Olympics. But as you can probably see from that, you know, it looks quite cool, doesn't it? You know, quite nice livery on it, nice neckerchief. Young's, uh, Young's top. Young's is now um, owned by Charles Wells, or Young's and Wells, as they call it, which is actually in my um, hometown here in the UK of Bedford. Now this was 99 English pence, um, this came from um, supermarket franchise, well mini franchise as it were, Londis, um, sort of a bit like in the States you might have like spas and 7-Eleven type things, that, that's a bit what they're like. So I'll read you off the back actually because this, this really really gets on my wick this does, but it, all it says is contains malted barley. Um, brewed and bottled in Bedford and that's it, it doesn't give you any details about the hops um, wheat, it's just oh, it's terrible, absolutely terrible hopefully it tastes definitely better than what the uh, descriptive is um, it is actually bottled conditioned this one is there is a little bit on the back that says you can leave the, you know, the, the last bit in and give it a bit of a swirl if you want to taste it, if not this leave it in. So without further faffing, let's get this bad boy cracked open. Ooh. Bit of hiss, a little bit of cannon smoke. Now this been in the fridge overnight and uh, took it out maybe about 10-15 minutes ago so as always we've got a nice clean non-nucleated glass. Let's get this one poured. Well you can see straight from the straight from the offset really, that colour wise it's a bit of a straw golden colour isn't it I'll just leave that there for a second that's a one fist uh, one, <laughs> one fist head but we'll just leave that to to settle for a second colour wise, I mean that is really clear, that is what I call an old style golden ale colour can you see that? I don't think there's even much point in putting the old infamous torch against it to be honest because look you can see that oh, yeah, look at the carbonation on that that's that's fizzing away quite nicely to be honest now so this for me s sort of sits somewhere between a like a pale ale and a, and a maybe like a lager beer as we call them over here but um, let's uh, let's give it a, uh, a sniff and see what we got Um, aroma wise I'm not getting much hops on it um, but what I am getting is maybe a little bit of zesty flavour and by by zest or citrus I don't mean like grapefruit that you would get off um, something with like um, well, Cascade or Citroen but maybe a bit like lemon lime and orange type peel that sort of that sort of smell but um, the head's now gone down to something a bit more manageable. That's you know, that's just a little over a one finger. But let's give it a taste. So cheers chaps and, and ladies. Yeah, that zestiness comes out through the drink as well. Um it's quite it is quite dry and, and a little bit bitter on the finish, but for, very crisp, you can imagine this on a nice warm summer's day, 
barbecue if you don't really want to drink lager. So this sort of you know, fits somewhere in the middle. Um, that's quite sessionable actually because on the ABV that is well I'm gonna say quite sessionable 4.8. So it's it's not sort of like drinking Nat's piss, but then again it's not like drinking something that's a complete skull splitter like some of the ciders that uh, that's all some home brewers make. Um, let's give it another quick uh, quick taste. Now the body on that is, on, well on the mouthfeel I, I would call that sort of medium-ish for, um, and, and by that I mean it's not watery, it's not gloopy like a nice thick um, stout or a porter or something but you know for a golden pale alley type of type of drink you know that's a, a, a medium mouthful in my uh, in my book. Um, the carbonation is still popping away um, well I'm just thinking would I buy that again I don't think I would I'm glad I've had one to try and at that price you can't really go uh, go wrong um, I think there are a lot better ones out there um, of this particular style of beer but if you ever see one on offer like that, you know, that was, uh, say, 99 English pence, I think it was, pick one up, definitely worth the pop. Um, and that does it for me, guys. Let's just have a, one last taste. Still the citrusy, zesty off it. I'm not really getting anything on the malt, so. Mark's out of ten. Um, six and a half. Um... Straight up and down beer, ideal for a barbecue, wash in the hot weather, but that's about it guys. Thanks for watching, enough of me rambling, and uh, thanks for watching, and the quest continues, and we'll see you again real soon. Be seeing you. Hello, back again now, we're sort of maybe part B. Um, I swelled the yeast in the bottom of the glass, poured it in, as you can see it's completely changed the characteristic of this beer. Um, look at that. That's now got a nice sort of pale, you know, American pale ale colour ale that is. And since I've given the yeast a bit of a swoosh and put it in there, because when I did the original part of this video, hop wise, I didn't really make any comment on it because I knew from being in Bedford it wasn't going to be one of the American hops and I couldn't quite get my finger on what it's going to be. But now with the yeast in, it seems to have sort of actually kick started the, the aromas of this beer. Hop wise, I think that's a um, maybe some East Kent Goldings, a little bit of Fuggles in there, but not a lot. But mainly um, Styrian hops in there to give it that uh, give it that um, bite on the end. Um, but since you put the yeast in it, completely changes the taste of this beer. So I'm going to have, add an extra point onto it. So uh, cheers for watching, guys, and definitely end of the video. It's a wrap. Be seeing you.